Hi everybody, it's Jenny from Metamorphit. Welcome to my Friday Come to Jesus vlog. Um, <clears throat> as you might be able to tell, I'm sitting in my car. Again, I think like my last three vlogs have been me sitting in my car with my puppy. And uh, that means it's not Friday. It's Thursday. And I'm out at the field again for football and cheerleading for my little dudes um, who are out there practicing right now. And that's kind of what I want to talk to you about is um, prioritizing and making sure that you're taking you know time for you and time for your kids and that you're listening to your kids um, when football and cheerleading season started to become um, advertised around town uh, my guys saw it on um, some signs like that were just stuck into the ground and then there were some flyers like taped up on the the light posts and they were all really interested in doing it and so I contacted the organization and it just so happened that their practice times were all on the same day, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, uh, at 6 p.m. from 6 to 8. And so it seemed like a good opportunity for them to get involved in a sport, to try a sport, because um, we tried um, gymnastics uh, when Haley was two. We started gymnastics, and she did that for a short time, but then Ella and Ronan were like a newborn and a one-year-old, and it was it was difficult and challenging, and as Ella became mobile um, it became even more challenging and then uh, she Ella turned to and so we we tried gymnastics with Ella and Haley um, but Ella you know as a as a two-year-old and even Ella as a seven-year-old um, needs a lot of movement and in gymnastics at that age they expect them to like sit on these little circles and wait their turn and you know conform to um, to a set of rules that a two-year-old um, just might not be equipped to handle and so um, we ended up stopping. And then they tried dance when they were three and four, and Ronan was two. Um, and it was just all-girl dance. And again, we did it for like a month, like, you know, four sessions. And uh, Ronan just could not sit still inside the dance studio for, you know, the hour that it took the girls to do their lesson. And then Ella still had issues with following directions. Um, and so then we tried gymnastics again when they were five, six, and seven. Um, and Ronan, again, he lasted like a month. Um, so do you see a pattern here, right? So we try stuff and then it doesn't work out. Um, and so we stop and, you know, no one, my guys, they don't get in trouble for me because they, they try something and it just doesn't work out. Um, because they try, okay, they try. And if... If their behavior is impacting the rest of the class um, and their behavior can't be corrected, um, then it's time for us to move on, okay? Because it's not up to the instructor in the class to be continually disciplining the children and interfering with the rest of the class time. Um, and when you have three kids as close in age as mine, uh, ooh, there's a big wasp, I hate those things. Um, it's, it's challenging to try to find activities that they can all do at the same time. And if my husband, you know, works really hard so that, that we can do these things and so that I can stay home with the kids and so he's not available, you know, to help with this sort of thing. And whenever I go to sign up the kids for these things, he always tells me, Jenny, you know, this is all on you, right? And I commit, yeah, yeah, I got it, man, I got it. And, um... And then something happens, and I don't got it. I dropped my basket. and So, football and cheerleading. That was a really long-winded story to get back to football and cheerleading. They saw the signs. Mommy, we want to do it. We want to do it. So I call times. Yeah, great. Perfect. So we come, and uh, we start. And then, and I did. I asked the right questions. Like, where are these games at? Where are these cheerleading competitions at? Oh, they're all right around here. They're all right around here. Well, I guess because people come to play at our field from places like as far away as Bradenton, and they're coming to cheerleading competitions from Miami, right around here might mean as far as Orlando, dude, right? I mean, that's like a 90-minute drive. So once I get the schedule of games and practices, and, and after we've already signed up and I've paid all this money... Um, then I find out that some of these games are like two hours away and they happen to be on the same days that Haley has her competitions. 
So I had to, you know, make a, a calculated decision as to what was I going to do. Were Ellen Ronan going to go play flag, flag football? Or was Haley going to get taken to cheerleading competition? Um, again, because my husband couldn't, couldn't help. Um, so it, we had to make a calculated decision that it would be Haley that would get to our competitions because she earned some bling. Um, and really, you know, a six and seven year old for flag, flag football, you know, sorry, it's going to take a back burner to uh, a competition for, for a sport. So this week on Saturday is Haley's last competition. And they have not even been wanting to come, you know, honestly. But I, you know, I told Haley that she does need to commit to her team, um, her squad, I guess squad is the right word, uh, to finishing out the rest of this season. But after that, I, you know, I think, I think we're done. Um, I asked them, well, you know, we still need to be active. So what do you want to do? And, and they, they want to work out with me in the, in the afternoons when they get home from school and they do their homework. They want to just be kids and play. They want to go for bike rides and go for walks with, with mommy and Matthew and go to the pool and go swimming and, you know, just not have the pressure of an organized sport. And, you know, I'm, I'm okay with that. You know, they're young. They're, you know, seven, eight, and nine. And there's going to be, geez, Matthew, you all right back there? There's going to be plenty of time uh, for them to play a sport and to learn the rules of sportsmanship. And the rules of sportsmanship are something that I can teach them, you know, at home as we as we play games and, and do things together. Um, and then they still have PE at school, so they'll continue to learn sportsmanship rules there. Um, but for me, you know, I want my kids to just enjoy being kids. And if they're not enjoying coming out to the field and, and playing not worth it. It's not worth it. So just like I had to find my passion, the kids need to find their passion. And so if that means that we explore a lot of different activities until they find what motivates them and drives them, then so be it, right? We're out some money, we're out some time, but the kids get to explore and get to experiment. And that's what it's all about. So that's it. Take time for you. Take time for your kids. Let your kids explore. Let your kids have fun. Let your kids find out who they are and what makes them tick. Because what makes them tick might not be what makes you tick. And so, you know, you just need to let them have some fun and, and figure that out for themselves and just be there for them. And, uh, and that's it. So that's all I got, guys. I'm going to go take the dog for a walk. All right, have a good one. And over and out. <laughs>